Thank you for joining us, um, Patricia. As we are here at the Lake House, where we are going to be bringing you the first COVID-19 update. And giving us the active update is the Secretary of the Cabinet at our final meeting. And I'll hand you over to him. Countrymen and women, members of the press, good afternoon. Um, let me recognize the presence of um, the permanent secretaries in the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. The Government of the Republic of Zambia continues to place as a priority public health security in order to safeguard the well-being of our people. Um, His Excellency the President, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu is on the record of ensuring that uh, we have an economically productive nation which is driven by a healthy population. Acknowledging that health matters are beyond COVID-19, it's important that uh, we have to fight the pandemic and um, the government continues strengthening health systems, uh, investing in maternal, child health and nutrition, as well as um, the fight against HIV and AIDS, TB, malaria, and other communicable and non-communicable diseases, which are generally anchored on primary health care. Um, countrymen and women, 
members of the press, I wish to inform you um, this afternoon that the Minister of Health, Dr. Ishtaru Chilufia MP, took a COVID-19 test and the results have come back positive. However, he is currently feeling fine. Uh, but in line with the current health guidelines, he has commenced self-isolation and will remain under isolation until he is discharged by health authorities based on the set criteria. The Ministry of Health officials have begun reaching out to his close contacts so that they are screened and tested. Um, Dr. Chiru, Ch uh, Chirufia will continue supporting the COVID-19 response under the new normal living with the, the coronavirus using ICT platforms. And so you continue to provide support virtually. His Excellency the President, uh, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu, has wished Dr. Chirufia well as he continues with self-isolation and monitoring by health personnel. And I'm sure all of us here uh, wishes him well, as he's been providing excellent leadership from the time we had the COVID uh, pandemic coming into Zambia. As we are also aware, one of our leaders, Honorable Dora Seria, who has been instrumental again in the fight against COVID-19, publicly announced that she was tested positive for the virus a few days ago. Honorable Seria remained stable and has self-isolated herself in line with the standard medical practice and criteria. We applaud her courage and urge the public to respect her right to privacy as well as ensure that she has a speedy recovery. In line with our response strategies, the response team are tracing and testing all her contacts. Countrymen and women, following the last national address by His Excellency President Edgar Chagwalungu, various aspects have arisen. As the court season approaches, we have noted an increase in the number of respiratory cases, including coughs and colds nationally and indeed in the region. We have continued to respond to the COVID-19 outbreak with our public health and medical teams implementing surveillance activities, contact tracing, diagnostics, case management, risk communication and the community sensitization. In as far as the, the situation is concerned for today, we report 137 new cases of COVID-19 out of 4,264 tests which were conducted in the last five days. Maybe I should repeat that. Today, we report 137 new cases of COVID-19 out of 4,264 tests conducted in the last five days. The cases have been detected through community and point of entry screening contact tracing and health facility surveillance and uh, the breakdown is as follows 56 were from routine screening where we had the Lusaka 19 Nakonde 27 Chilanga 5 Ndola 3 Chinsali 1 and Kitwe 1 then also at 33 truck drivers and um, 24 of those are from Nakonde, 
ndola 4 chipata 2 chirundu 1 we also had 26 healthcare workers all from Lusaka we had 16 contacts to known cases and uh, those are from uh, Nakonde 7 Lusaka 6 Kabo 1 Mansa 2 and four hospital surveillance cases from Lusaka UTH. We also had two from points of entry at Nakonde. And that total gives us 137. I wish also to mention that uh, we have discharged 443 patients from our isolation facilities 392 from Uchinga province 39 from Lev Manawasa isolation center and 6 from Copper Belt 5 from Kabwe and 2 healthcare workers in Lusaka that have tested negative to COVID-19 therefore the cumulative number of cases is now 1057 and we are still at seven deaths and we have recorded cumulatively 743 recoveries who have been discharged distinguished ladies and gentlemen we continue to monitor persons at high risk and to date, a total of 4,680 have successfully completed the 14-day mandatory quarantine. And furthermore, our response team has cleared as none cases a total of 2,530 alerts which have been notified. Globally, a total of 5,688 cases. Uh, of COVID-19, including 3,552 deaths have been recorded, with about 2.4 million recoveries that have been confirmed by eight hours this morning. And among that number, we have uh, about two, those cases are coming from 213 countries. Um, as of today. In Africa, coming to our region, the cumulative number of cases is 121,547, including 3,613 uh, deaths, and we've had 49,912 recoveries. Countrymen and women, um, if we're now um, coming to the update on the various epicenters you know, that I've just mentioned, I'll start with Nakonde. In Nakonde, 2,994 people have been screened so far, and in the last five days, we've recorded 35 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the cumulative to 531 so far. That's for Nakonde. And the, the positive cases have consisted of 154 who are truck drivers. Uh, for supervised community-based isolation model, model this is the one which is now being implemented uh, where we're able to have a situation where we've adopted um, a supervised commit-based isolation mod model, which means that uh, we're able to uh, ensure that the community surveillance is managed by public health workers. And out of that, 100 community health workers have been trained um, to visit an average of 100 people a day. 
and so far, 245 people have been placed on home-based isolation. In Chirundu, since 2nd May 2020, 8,322 persons have been screened, including 6,000 truck drivers, and 1,000 of those were through mass screening and the rest through routine screening for contacts and alerts. And out of Chirundu, we've had, uh, we've had 37 positive cases, 35 of whom are truck drivers who have been identified out of the samples that have been tested so far. Coming to Lusaka district, uh, which was the, the first district to be affected by COVID-19 in the country, in the last five days, 17 people have tested positive in Lusaka. They were detected through point of entry screening, mass screening, contact uh, tracing and hospital surveillance. We've continued to screen alerts, the contacts and patients in health facilities and healthcare workers in the response. We'll soon launch a targeted screening and testing at Comesa Market. Going to the Copper Belt province, um, 18 COVID cases have been detected on the Copper Belt in the last five days. A similar intervention to the one that we did in Kafue will be implemented on the Copper Belt province, targeting Indola, Chijabombo, and Chingola districts. The Kasumbalesa border area is also targeted. The operation will involve community sensitization, mass community screening, contact tracing, cleaning, and disinfection of public places. Going to Kabwe, we clearly note an increase in the number of COVID cases in Kabwe, and cumulatively we've reached unrecorded 33 cases, seven of which were recorded in the last five days. The seven are all contacts to known cases and um, we are yet to do an intervention similar to the one that was done in Kafue, which will then uh, provide us with more contacts and this we hope to be implemented in the next couple of weeks. Members of the press, uh, fellow countrymen and women, Following the directive, from, the directive from our Head of State, His Excellency President Edgar Chabwalungu, we have to adjust our lives and systems in line with the new normal. And the new normal is basically living with COVID-19. In this regard, we've made adjustments to our case management strategy. And that is all high-risk groups, including children, the elderly, and those with underlying risk medical conditions, and the, those patients who have symptoms will be the ones that will be isolated and managed in our healthcare facilities. All COVID-19 positive cases who have no symptoms at all will be managed under supervised home-based care as is being done in Nakonde. As I've mentioned, trained community health workers supervised by senior nurses and doctors will be assigned to households for close monitoring. With this approach in place, we now have in healthcare facilities 31 patients. Um, these are the patients who are currently in our healthcare facilities with either symptoms, because they've got the symptoms of COVID, or they've got risk underlying conditions, as I've mentioned. Truck drivers who will be screened and tested at point of entry will be monitored through their journey to point of destination and exit. In other words, as they enter, they are escorted 
up to where they're supposed to exit or quarantined at designated places. We will enhance our health facility surveillance to quickly detect and manage any COVID-19 cases in our health facilities. Coming to the education sector support, as you are aware, His Excellency President did announce that the schools for examination classes would open on the 1st of June. And therefore, our teams in the provincial and district health offices are working hand in hand with the Ministry of General Education, the Ministry of Local Government, the Disaster Management and Mitigation Unit, DMMU, which is under the Vice President's Office, the Office of the District Commissioners, and the various supporters to ensure that the environment is adequately prepared for the incoming pupils. And as uh, we've been saying in the past, um, this has to do with ensuring that uh, they adhere to the public health regulations, they adhere to the public health guidelines and certification. And so this will be an exercise which will be undertaken to ensure that um, the examination classes and the pupils are well looked after, including the issue of masking, disinfection, and the social distancing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, countrymen and women, our risk communication and communication engagement team are preparing targeted messages for pupils and teaching staff. We encourage all stakeholders that support the welfare of children and the youth to come out or to come on board and support the preparedness activities with resources and technical support. We already appreciate the various donations that have come forward, that have been provided financially and in kind. And we hope that uh, that will continue. Once we transit into the new supervised home isolation and quarantine for those cases who, are, who don't have symptoms, but uh, they are positive, it is important that we still adhere to the public health measures that have been stipulated in the Public Health Act Cap 295 and Statutory Instruments number 21 and 22 of 2020, as well as all the presidential directives and measures that have been announced in the previous addresses. And just to recap, these include restricted public gatherings, mandatory masking up in public places, frequent hand washing, maintaining personal hygiene and environmental cleanliness, physical distancing, no handshakes and hugs, restricted movements, and also to be our brothers or sisters gatekeepers in ensuring that we report suspected cases and ourselves whenever we feel ill. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may God bless Zambia with wellness, good health and fruitfulness. And I thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, as well to cabinet. Allow me to invite our colleagues from the media. If you have questions or points of clarification, yes, my person, the ladies, you can want to come to the microphone. Dada, please, just come. Good afternoon, I think that you can get under.
in case it's present. Um, I just want to find out. Uh, there, there's been a way circulating that uh, there are ministers that uh, did attend in 2010 together with uh, the person who was also a case that's positive today, including uh, one of the ministers last year. So I just want to find out and uh, for the sake of clarifying the, the way that is going around, what is going to happen if the ministers that attended that cabinet meeting? Are they going to also submit it to the test? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. SC? Um, thank you very much uh, for that very important question. Um, I wish to mention that, um, yes, um, it's a matter that has come into public domain. And uh, I wish to mention that um, it is an ongoing exercise. Uh, you may wish to note that um, we have identified the primary contacts of um, Honorable Minister Chirufia and the Dora Esria, and those primary contacts have been tested, and um, I'm glad to report that uh, um, most of them are in fact negative. Um, it being an ongoing exercise, um, secondary contacts have also been requested. Um, those are members of cabinet and the cabinet secretariat, um, including those in the ministry and indeed those that have been part of the coverage, the media and so on. Um, they will be contacted, and some of them have been contacted already. And um, as results come out, for those that are positive but have no symptoms, then the new normal will thrive. And that is, they will be on self-isolation in their homes. For those that are positive and they've got uh, symptoms, um, for those, um, and especially if they've got underlying symptoms, uh, underlying you know, uh, problems or diseases, then they will be isolated or quarantined in the health facilities. Um, I would like to emphasize that both ministers, as we speak, are very stable. And um, in line with the new normal of living with COVID-19 and that we have to continue to ensure that um, the wheels of the economy should still run, it should continue running and that uh, everybody must be productive. As I speak, the ministers are working virtually by using the ICT platforms. And that is a demonstration uh, which as Secretary of the Cabinet uh, will be inculcated in the public service that um, with a new normal means working and being productive even when you are at home and you are positive. And the ministers have given a clear demonstration of that patriotism uh, to work virtually as we continue with the, the COVID fight. I would like to take advantage of uh, this gathering to mention, and uh, of course uh, to the nation, to mention that um, in the recent past, we did not have as much information on COVID-19 as we have now. Our experience in, to, in close to over two months and also what WHO has been telling us gives us enough knowledge in terms of how we're going to handle ourselves in the future. And His Excellency the President is on firm ground 
to ensure that um, the country's economy continues to run and that uh, we also ensure that in even those that are positive COVID but they do not have any symptoms that they continue to provide some leadership being pro by being productive and working as a new normal. And as you are aware, WHO has given us information that uh, the COVID-19 is going to be a way of life because it's not going away soon. In fact, they are saying it will probably with, be with us forever. And therefore, the issue of adapting and adopting to the new normal becomes paramount and ensuring that we adhere to the public health guidelines of masking up, um, social distancing, and ensuring that uh, we are also each other's uh, brothers and sisters keeper and that we should continue to be productive in that sense. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, I see. I see no more hands, then I'll ask you to wrap up and then we call it today. Thank you very much. Well, in, in wrapping up... Oh, I see there is some outstanding hands there. Eh? Okay. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, as I've mentioned, that um, uh, this pandemic, I think we're now beginning to know it better than we knew it a few months ago. Um, the issue here is that, um, yes, you've mentioned that if somebody is positive and he has no symptoms, uh, or they have symptoms, and they're able to transmit to, uh, to their friends or to their you know, immediate uh, persons that they are with. And this is why we talk about contact tracing and ensuring that uh, we follow up. However, um, in line with the, the new normal, um, we are beginning to see a situation where we don't have mortality as is being experienced in other parts of the world. Um, one of our key indicators is to ensure that people are healthy and that they recover. And um, uh, this afternoon, I'm reporting that um, in the last five days, 443 patients from our isolation facilities have been discharged. That gives us hope. And um, the president, his Excellency Edgar Chagwalungu has been mentioning that uh, we have to live the new normal and living with the COVID. And um, also what gives us confidence, even with a new model of ensuring that uh, we don't just quarantine everybody, but rather that uh, if one is positive and uh, they don't have symptoms, that they can actually be quarantined in their home states. Unless there are un other you know, uh, underlying circumstances 
that may warrant that that patient be in, uh, quarantined in the um, in the health facility. Uh, I would not want to go in so much detail, but I'm sure uh, there was a clip which was uh, you know, regrettable of what happened in Chinsali, uh, where you know people were positive, and I'm sure you must have seen the energies that they exhibited. Um, that clearly shows that uh, they can actually be looked after, you know, at all. Uh, so, um, just as I said in, in wrap up. Uh, over the past five days, uh, we've had about 137 cases out of 4,264. That's a huge number. And um, you know, for the past you know, um, two to three months since we've had COVID in Zambia, we've only recorded seven deaths. And even these deaths, as you are aware, um, the majority of them had underlying symptoms and underlying problems, including a suicide case. So we are confident that uh, the measures that were put in place and the, the knowledge that we have acquired you know, over the past you know, two to three months is given us a lot of hope and encouragement that we can actually fight and um, in, win this war and fight this pandemic. And it requires all of us it requires you know, us uh, ensuring that we adhere to the public health guidelines, um, restricted the public gatherings, masking up in public, um, frequent hand washing, maintaining personal hygiene and environmental cleanliness, physical distancing, no handshakes and hugs, restricted movements, and ensuring that uh, we are each brother and sister's gatekeepers. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, SC. And we come to the end of the update. We will be informed as to when the next update will take place. Let me hand over to Patricia Fanat. Thank you very much.